Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with part one of what will probably be a two-part After Effects tutorial showing you how to create this effect. As you can see, we've got uh, a brush metal steel background um, which is being laser etched by a laser beam leaving behind a red hot glowing uh, surface um, which gradually cools over time. You've got a bit of heat haze and you've got a bit of smoke and you've got some nice sparks and highlights and other things going on. Um, one point before we get started, um, I'm using CS5 for this. I know I normally use CS3 to keep it more compatible with a wider base of users, but there's a feature I use in this which is specific to After Effects CS5 and CS4 and can't really be achieved in CS3 without um, a lot of manual labor. And frankly, I can't be jarred, but I will give you an outline of, of how to do it in CS3 when I get to that point. Okay, so that's enough chat. Let's get started. Create your first new composition, we'll call it Laser Etch. Um, I'm using, as always, my 720p preset, which is 1280 by 720 pixels, 25 frames per second, and we'll make it 15 seconds long. And just hit OK. Now, I've already shown you how to create a brush metal background in another tutorial, so I won't spend too much time on it. I'll just uh, run through, so create a new solid. Make it a dark gray. We'll call it brushed metal and just hit OK. Grab the noise effect from your effects and presets. Crank up the noise to 100%. Turn off use color noise. Back to your effects and presets panel. Find your fast blur effect. Apply that. Increase the blurriness to about 150. Set it to horizontal only and check the repeat edge pixels box. To stop it from being animated, you need to select your brush metal layer, hit Control Shift and C to pre-compose it. And we'll just leave it at that. Make sure you move all the attributes into the new composition and just hit OK. Then you right click on your new pre-comp, go to time and select freeze frame. And that will just lock the animation in place, giving us our brushed metal effect layer. Okay, so step one of the uh, tutorial proper is to create your text layer. Now I'm using uh, Arial Black because it's a font that pretty much everyone has installed, but you can use um, any, any typeface you like. Um, just bear in mind that this can be a little bit fiddly, so long type will take you a long time to process. And uh, it's probably best if you use a display typeface, you know, something big, chunky and bold because that'll give you better results and it'll take you less time as well. So I'll just um, dump this into the middle of the frame so we can see it better. Okay, so this is the bit that's specific to CS4 and CS5. You right click on your text and you select Create Masks from Text. Now in CS3, the closest you can get to this is to select the layer and create outlines from text it achieves the same thing, but you don't get any masks. Um, so what you then have to do is take each outline that's created in the new outlines layer and manually copy and paste it into a mask layer. Now if you look back in the timeline, you'll notice that our original text layer has been hidden, the visibility has been turned off, and we have a brand new text outlines layer which contains all of the masks that it created um, using this feature. So I'm just going to rename this and call it Etch Outer. And I'm also going to uh, set the Shy um, property on the text and just get out of the way. We may need it later, but we probably won't do. OK, next step, go to your Effects and Presets panel and find your Stroke effect. And add that to your Etch Outer layer. Now if I just hit Control Shift and H, that'll hide all the uh, mask indicator layer so we can see it properly. Now go up to your Effect Controls panel and select All Masks and make sure Stroke Sequentially is also selected. Change the colour to a nice kind of molten orange and increase the brush size to about 8 and that'll give you this effect. 
Now we animate that effect by uh, setting keyframes on the end point. So uh, make sure your timeline indicator is still at the beginning of the timeline. And uh, just hit the stopwatch to create an, a keyframe on the end point. And we'll set it to zero. I'm just going to select the edge outer layer and tap U to bring up the uh, the properties that have keyframes on them. And you'll see we've got our original keyframe there. I'm going to move the timeline indicator to about the four second mark and just increase the value to 100%. As you can see, as I did that, it basically drew an outline across all of our text, element by element, until we've got a complete stroke all the way around the outside. And that's what we'll be using as the basis for our um, etched edges. A couple of things we want to do before we uh, move on. In the paint style, select on transparent, and that'll just get rid of the, uh, the solid text in the middle. Next, you go to your Effects and Presets panel, find your Rough and Edges effect, and drag that onto your Etch Outer Layer. Now, you can play with it as much as you like, but I think the uh, default settings for this are, uh, are OK. So that just gives us a nice, kind of thick, rough edge, just like we want. Next thing to do is find your Glow effect, and drop that on top. Now I'm going to increase the glow radius significantly, so we'll take it up to about 40. And as you can see, as the line is drawn, you get an accompanying hot looking glow that goes with it. Okay, so that's looking good so far. What I want you to do now is hit Ctrl and D to duplicate your etch outer layer. And we'll rename it to etch inner. I'll just uh, turn off the visibility of the etch outer layer and go back to the etch inner layer. We need to change the color and the stroke values to a nice sharp yellow. And take the brush size right down to about four. And that gives us this nice kind of thin roughened line in the middle. Turn the etch outer layer visibility back on. And you can see you've got this nice hot inner core, but we don't want the hot inner core to be there forever. We want it to appear at the point of the laser beam and kind of chase it around. So you've got that kind of point of intense heat that uh, cools off really, really rapidly. So we do that by setting the timeline indicator back to the beginning of your timeline. And we'll just create a start keyframe. Go back to your timeline and tap U to bring up the, uh, the properties with keyframes. Go to the four second mark and scrub it to 100%. And now we're just going to select both of those keyframes and nudge them about three frames forward. Now when I scrub through, you'll find that we've got a short thin layer that follows the leading edge of the text. So that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted that kind of nice sharp point of intense light in the middle. Okay, it's looking pretty good so far. Now just to make this um, look as if it's been etched into the metal, you've probably guessed it by now, but it's a right click, layer styles, and bevel and emboss, our all time favorite. So in the bevel and emboss settings, leave it at inner bevel, change the direction to down, and increase the size until you get the effect you're after. I think that uh, 10, value of 10 is pretty much what we need. All right, so once you've created your inner bevel, just move the timeline indicator to a point beyond the animation, so just past the five second mark in my case. Select your etch outer layer and just create a keyframe on the stroke color. Then move the timeline indicator to about the 11 second mark and change the color to a dark, dark orange. Now you'll notice when I tap U to bring up the uh, 
the keyframe properties, CS5 has a rather funky new feature that shows you the color value as it fades. So if you wanted to, you can actually take that down to a reddish orange. And then further into the red. And we'll change that to absolute black. So that gives us our cooling metal. Now the good news is creating a laser beam is really, really simple in After Effects. The bad news is this requires a certain degree of uh, manual keyframe creation. So uh, this next step does take a little bit of time to produce. So first thing to do, create a new solid. Doesn't really matter what color it is because it'll be invisible anyway. We'll call it laser beam and just hit OK. In the effects and presets panel, find the beam effect and drag that onto the laser beam layer. Now the default settings give you this uh, kind of pinkish red lightsaber-like beam, which is what most people use it for. Um, we want to increase the length to 100%. Now you need to choose where your starting point is going to be. Um, I had it off screen down at the bottom in the tutorial preview, so we'll start with um, off screen up at the top for this one. Ending point doesn't really matter at this stage, we're just uh, doing some adjustments. So starting thickness, take that right up to about 75, just to give it that acute coming in from uh, the far foreground look. And end thickness, you can probably leave it about 8 or maybe just take it up to about 10. Colours, entirely your choice. I'm going to choose colours that fairly closely match the colours we've got for the metal. So a nice bright yellow core and a strong red outline. Okay, so with the timeline indicator right at the beginning of your timeline, take the ending point and drop it off screen so it's not visible and then create an ending point keyframe by hitting the stopwatch. Just tapping U to bring up the keyframe property on the timeline and I'm also going to hit Control Shift and H because if you remember earlier I uh, hit all the, the layer indicators and the mask indicators just so we could see the things better but you'll need them back on for this set. So, with the composition selected, tap page down to advance one frame. Grab the ending point setting for your beam and drop it on the leading edge of your etch. Like so. Page down again. And just keep matching the end point of your laser beam so that it follows the etch through the animation process. Now, like I said, there's a lot of manual keyframe cre creation going on here, so it is going to take me a while. So I'll see you after the fade to black. So when you've done all of that, you've painstakingly gone page down, page down, page down and created all these manual keyframes, you should end up with the uh, primary elements of your animation pretty much complete. As you can see, you've got the laser beam, it's tracking each of the, uh, the edges of the etch layer. And uh, when it reaches the end, I just move the end point off screen so the laser beam is no longer visible. I think that's probably about it for the first part of this tutorial. I'll uh, cover off things like the highlight, the sparks, the displacement map and the smoke in the next part. So I um, hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's useful to you and I'll see you in part two.